you see your bagpipe echoing down the hall. <laughs> <laughs>
they want us to play something else, let's do the rondo. Okay. Nice. Be out, you know, we'll bounce back and forth between these two. Give it a minute in between. <laughs> Please. <laughs> How fast are we taking this one again? So. Um, I think we're at half an hour. It's not a symphony. <laughs> it's, just, it's like two minutes long. Oh, is that the line right there? Yes, yes. it looks like it is. Uh, so right. trumpet, trumpet air and tune, trumpet tune and air then. I think a lot of these front seats are reserved, oh, too. Yeah. I guess they're just going to that section. Yeah, a lot of the left of side has tags on it. Oh, I see the bag picture.
Thank you. Everyone, please be seated. Good morning. At this time, I invite Philip White Creek, coordinator of the Indigenous Community Support and Outreach, Clarkson University, to offer Mohawk opening words. Philip. Kwe kwe, hint. Dano sego se guego. Lohe dil yungets, aquas snolo, dano waganiodo, dano ginyaka haka. Greetings, everyone. I'm from the Mohawk community of Akwezasne, and I was asked by my dear friend, Robin Hadigan to conduct the Ohundu Kaliwadekwa, which literally translates to the words that are said before all else. These words are traditionally spoken as an acknowledgement and thanking of all aspects of the natural world that continue to do their part and allows us all to meet and conduct today's important business. With that, I will speak the words of thanks and acknowledgement in Kanyakkeha, also known as the Mohawk language. And the slides will give you a visual and English interpretation. Before I start, I wish to address the following. Your Sinus College respectfully acknowledges that the campus rests on the Lenape Hokkank and the ancestral and spiritual homelands of the following five nations. Delaware Tribe of Indians, Delaware Nation, Delaware Nation of Moraurian Town, Stockbridge Muncie Community, and the Muncie Delaware Nation of Ontario. The community carries names derived from the Lenape language names and holding spiritual and cultural meaning while also bearing the remembrance of the systemic removal of the Lenape people over 250 years ago by European colonial powers, whose legacy still reinforces and benefits from the Lenape's disenfranchisement. Your Sinus College commits to collaboration, representation, and inclusion as we work together with the Lenape people to bring about healing and reconciliation between and among all our communities. Now at Goa. Now we turn to the slides. Ohundo Galiwadekwa, the words that are said before all else. Agwegoaska, Adidawa Wet Nuni, Neguat Nigula, Dano Deetun and Lado. All as one, we will combine our mind and we will greet. Next slide. Ogwatsua, the people. Agwegoaska, Adidawa Wet Nuni, Neguat Nigula, Dano Deetun and Lado, Ogwatsua. Next. Agwegoaska did the Wawet Nuni, Nagot Nigula, Dano De Tunoladu, Nayaki Sutta, Kuma, O Witta, Jinuha, Nagot Nigula To. Next. Agwegoaska, I did the Wawet Nuni, Nagot Nigula, Dano De Tunoladu, Nayongara Sua, Diaduha, Nagot Nigula To. Next side. Agwegoaska, I did the Wawet Nuni, Nagot Nigula, Dano De Tunoladu, Nayakajit Sua. Diaduha, Nagwat Nigula, To. Next. Agwe Gawaska, Adidawa Wet Nuni, Nagwat Nigula, Dano De Tunladu, Ne Ohende Sua. Diaduha, Nagwat Nigula, To. Next slide. Agwe Gawaska, Adidawa Wet Nuni, Nagwat Nigula, Dano Gayon Tusala. Diaduha, Nagwat Nigula, To. Next slide. Agwe Gawaska, Adidawa Wet Nuni, Nagwat Nigula, Dano De Tunladu. Next slide. Next slide. Neguat Nigula, Dano De Tunaladu, Negandilio, Tiadua, Neguat Nigula, To. Next. Agwego Aska, Adedua Wet Nuni, Neguat Nigula, Dano De Tunaladu, Ne Ojita Agua, Tiadua, Neguat Nigula, To. Next slide. Agwego Aska, Adedua Wet Nuni, Neguat Nigula, Dano De Tunaladu, Ne Gaeli, Neguedege, Tiadua, Neguat Nigula, To. Next. Agwego Aska, Adedua Wet Nuni, Neguat Nigula, Dano de Tunaladu, Ne Yukisuta Gua, Letiwelas, Tiaduha, Neguat Nigula, To. 
a gwe gwaska a de dwa wet nuni ne gwa ni gulo tano de tuno lado ne so go chika ko hane glakwa ye do ne gwa ni gulo to next a gwe gwaska a de dwa wet nuni ne gwa ni gulo tano de tuno lado ne yaki suta a suta ne ha glakwa ye do ne gwa ni gulo to a gwe gwaska a de dwa wet nuni ne gwa ni gulo tano de tuno lado ne Yo jita agu an la lunio dia noha na guat ni gula to agua gosca a de wa nuni na guat ni gula dano de tu no ladu ne gaeli ni gua de ge dia noha na guat ni gula to next one agua gosca a de wa nuni na guat ni gula dano de tu no ladu ne sa guat de zo to dia noha na guat ni gula now go and we will continue today's program. Tom. Thank you, Philip, for your inspired words and welcome. President Hannigan, platform guests, fellow trustees, honorable delegates, valued faculty, staff, coaches, students, and special guests. I want to welcome you. My name is Joe D. Simone. I'm a <clears throat> proud graduate of Ursinus College, class of 1986, <clears throat> and a parent of Philip, class of 2012, and I'm chair of the Board of Trustees. Uh, as a day job, I'm professor of translational medicine and chemical engineering at Stanford University in California, and I truly represent a college that transforms lives as a graduate. It was a little, was a little easier to get in under sinus back when I got in. And I think a lot of the trustees sort of believe the same too. Um, especially after we heard some of our students last night. Uh, it's just amazing. But on behalf of the trustees, I warmly welcome you to this historic day for our college, our surrounding Collegeville and Montgomery County communities. We gather as to celebrate a milestone in the long history of this college to formally install Robin E. Hannigan as our 19th president. As many of you have already come to know, and others will soon find out, Robin's passion for higher education, the liberal arts, research, and access has made an indelible mark upon each institution she has served. She is a change maker who thinks differently and whose career as a researcher and creator has been grounded in inquiry and experimentation, the very thing that has informed my own journey as a scientist and an entrepreneur, and what is at the core of our Sinus College quest and a common intellectual experience. Our mission states that our college is charged with enabling students to become independent, responsible, and thoughtful individuals through a program of liberal education. After 153 distinguished years, that mission still rings true, and it's needed more than ever today in our society. It is the foundation of the success of so many of our alumni, and it is proof that the liberal arts can shape, in a very sustainable and meaningful way, new and emerging professional fields and global service initiatives and transform lives. As President Hannigan often speaks of one or sinus, we must all remember that we each have a role to play in support of our new president and the mission of this college. She is a creative strategist, a student-focused leader, and a steward of transdisciplinary liberal arts education. I am honored to preside over Professor Hannigan's inauguration and, my, and I'm excited to see how she shapes our future. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Professor Lewis Riley, Professor of Physics and Chair of the Faculty Council, speaking on behalf of the faculty. Good morning. On behalf of the faculty, I, uh, it's my pleasure to, uh, to introduce Robin Hannigan to Ursinus.
We look forward to collaborating with President Hannigan and partners across the college to raise the profile of the transformative liberal arts education that distinguishes our sinus graduates. President Hannigan's commitment to shared governance honors the voices of those dedicated to mentoring the students that we are confident will be tomorrow's leaders. Against the backdrop of a global pandemic and crises in higher education, the faculty places its trust in President Hannigan to help us emerge from these challenges as a model of integrity and innovation. We support President Hannigan in our steadfast commitment to academic excellence, inclusion, civic action, sustainability, and compassionate community. Our faculty believe that the same four questions that define Quest can help us forge a path forward, and we look forward to traveling that path together under President Hannigan's leadership. Thank you, Professor Riley. It is my pleasure now to introduce Arthur Artine, speaking on behalf of the students. Arthur. Good morning. My name is Arthur Artene. As the Arsinus College Student Government President, it is my honor to represent our entire student body in welcoming President Robin Hannigan to Arsinus. Our students, each future leaders to our communities, are diverse and academically talented. We are known as innovative thinkers with civically minded interests grounded in the common good. That's why we chose our sinus, a place that empowers us to continually ask questions and spark inquiry. President Hannigan, you have already made a big impact on us by demonstrating a passionate spirit that teaches us to consider every possibility. We are excited to see what the future holds for our college under your guidance. On behalf of every student, I extend to you a warm or sign as welcome. Go Bears. Uh, Arthur is a computer science major that will be on the job scene in May. <laughs> and, uh, and as you know, it's really hard to hire a computer science major, so he'll be collecting uh, offers on the way out. Um, thank you, Arthur. There we go. I now ask Melanie Cunningham, President of Staff Assembly, to deliver greetings on behalf of the staff for Sinus College. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of roughly 370 people who count themselves among our staff family, welcome President Hannigan. As President of Staff Assembly, I humbly share this moment with all my colleagues, many of whom have been with their sinus for years and decades before myself. The energy and dedication of our staff drew me to work at Ursinus, and I feel a sense of pride in being part of the infrastructure that girders this institution. We are a community that is gaining strength as we move into this new chapter together. President Hannigan, we welcome you as truly one of us, someone who has observed, experienced, and benefited from interactions with staff throughout your career, someone who is not only interested in staff collaboration and governance, but passionate about it, and someone who has already established themselves as a bear for life. Today we say, Sigo, and welcome home. Thanks, Melanie. Our staff and coaches are a key part of our organization here and really the glue that holds this campus together, so I appreciate your comments. I invite now Jivan Shaker, class of 1999, and Amy Shaker to deliver greetings from the alumni of Ursinus College. Good morning, everyone. I'm so grateful for the honor on behalf of the alumni 
to offer you these words of welcome to our sinus, President Hannigan. Like so many graduates of this fine institution, I came here in search of a degree and a profession, but I left this campus with more than I could ever imagined. I came away with a liberal arts education, a diverse skill set that fostered a penchant for lifelong learning, a creative mindset to explore beyond the traditional career paths, in my case as a physician initially, and the awareness of the interconnectedness of all things. For me, this means a radically compassionate approach to medicine and a commitment to community. President Hannigan, we applaud your recognition and commitment to the pricelessness and relevance of the liberal arts for addressing our world's challenges. Thank you for joining the Arsinus family and helping to enhance our legacy to contribute to a future of hope and possibility. Welcome, President Hannigan. On behalf of those honorary alumni who, though we did not attend Ursinus, believe in and are committed to the principles of the liberal arts education, principles that encourage students to be curious and thoughtful members of society, engage in lifelong personal growth, and commit to community and social improvement. I, a proud graduate of a liberal arts institution, first generation college student and PhD, academic, educator, and social change agent, am proud to support Ursinus alongside Jeevan precisely because of its dedication to its principals and students, past, present, and future. It is with eager anticipation that I welcome you, President Hannigan, to Ursinus, and I look forward to seeing Ursinus grow in new directions under your leadership. Uh, thank you, Amy and Javine. It is now my pleasure to induce Reverend Dr. Anson Wright Riggins, Mayor of Collegeville. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, Dr. Hannigan. Our hearts, our minds, and our arms are open to you. I often refer to Collegeville as a great place to come home to. One of the reasons for this is that because Ursinus is at the heart of our community and you have the heart of our community in your heart. Your gracious leadership has already demonstrated that Collegeville is dear to you. As a mayor and a member of this community, I consider Ursinus holy ground. To me, leadership is a sacred responsibility. May your presidency bring light and renewal to those who work with you and to those who see and receive your work. May your days in this space never weary you. May each evening find you joyful and fulfilled. And may you awake each dawn inspired and empowered to fulfill your dreams of possibilities and promises for Sinus College. God bless you and thank you. Um, thank you, Mayor. It's really terrific to have such a great relationship with the town. And I reminded the mayor that when I was a student here, I was a member of the College of Fire Department. It was a, it was a great way to get out of class. <laughs> it is now my distinct honor to introduce to you the Honorable Kate, Katie Muth. Senator Muth represents the residents of Pennsylvania's 44th Senatorial District, which includes parts of Berks, Chester, and Montgomery Counties. Joining us today to offer a greeting on behalf of the Commonwealth, Professor of State Senator Katie Muth. It is an honor to be here today on behalf of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and to share this historic day with the entire Ursinus College community. Since its founding in 1869, Ursinus College has been an integral part of the Collegeville community and to southeastern Pennsylvania. 
The education provided here is life-changing for students and the connection to our community is unparalleled. As someone who took their own non-traditional path to office, I can relate and really respect and admire the path that brought President Hannigan to our community and to her Sinus College. I am certain that President Hannigan and her impressive credentials, her experience, and her background will only further strengthen the partnerships between our Sinus and our community, not just to drive economic growth and academic success in our region, but to give the example of another woman in leadership. Congratulations again to President Hannigan, and I wish you, our Sinus College, and our surrounding community years of success, prosperity, student achievement, and I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. I had a dream so big and loud, I jumped so high, I touched the clouds. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. I reached so high, I touched the sky. We danced with monsters through the night. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. I'm never gonna look back. No, I'm never gonna give it up. Whoa, please don't wake me now. Awesome. I wish I could sing. <laughs> I want to uh, congratulate and welcome our new choral director, too, Nicole Snodgrass. <clears throat> now we come to the formal ceremony, 
which we will confer the authority and symbols of the presidency of Ursinus College. This ancient academic ceremony is counted among the oldest traditions in academia. Investiture comes from the Latin phrase for dress in robe, and it's come to mean one who will don, don the university's insignia and regalia. Today, colleges and universities view the investiture as an opportunity to welcome a new era and to celebrate as a community. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and members of the college community, Professor Hannigan, I welcome you as the 19th president of Ursinus College, an institution with roots dating back to 1869. President Hannigan, would you please join me up here at the lectern? Okay. All right. I'm going to repeat. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and members of the college community, I welcome you as the 19th president of our Sinus College, an institution that dates back to 1869. This medallion is a critical part of the culture, and I want to read for you on the back of the medallion. But still try, for who knows what's possible? Michael Faraday. I believe this is in Faylor Hall. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I assure you our confidence in you and your leadership, and we really welcome you to our Sinus College. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, in case you didn't figure it out already, I, I cry a lot. <laughs> but I'm so blessed to have John here with me, who also is a fellow crier. I appreciate that. So good morning, fellow bears. Before I get going, I want to say that although this week has been about Ursinus and about my presidency. There's a big weekend in town, and so I just want to say, go Phils, go Eagles. <laughs> and I just broke my husband's heart. <laughs> and pack, Packers too, go Pack. All right. It is an honor to be standing here with you today among so many friends and colleagues, new and old, as your 19th president. This afternoon, I want to extend an enthusiastic welcome to friends and family and colleagues, supporters, people I have come to know recently, people I've known for quite some time. I want to first say thank you to my husband, Alan, and my daughter, Cammie, and my mother-in-law, Pat Christian, who are here with me today. And I want to thank all of the bears who have adopted a 150-pound Great Dane named Astro and allowed him to consider this his campus. I hope you'll let him consider it that for just a little while longer. To Chair Joe DeSimone, Presidential Search Committee Chair Peg Williams, their colleagues on the Board of Trustees, the alumni, faculty, staff, and students at Ursinus, you all truly have a bond that can never be broken. This place is really special, steeped in history with an eye towards the future, and I'm truly honored to be a steward of that tradition. I'm deeply blessed to have some friends and family here, as I mentioned, among them some former students. All of them, especially Tom and Brianna, learned some things when they were working with me, not the least of which is that pickled octopus does in fact pair with almost anything. And argon does not grow on trees. I am particularly ex excited, honored, privileged, I can't even use the words to say that my, my president, Tony Collins, is here. He is uh, someone who taught me how to lead and showed me what a special obligation a presidency is to stand firm in keeping the promise of higher education alive. Thank you. Oh, goodness. <laughs> 
No, I know I, I mentioned my mother-in-law is here, um, and I really can't wait till we get back to our annual vacations. Thank you for wrapping your arms around me and showing me the power of family, something I really didn't have much of growing up. I am truly grateful for you for showing me how to stand in the comfort and love of family. Whew, all right, this campus is really not only about my own self-discovery, but about discovery and invention, where scholars and athletes and artists exist and share a common DNA. I, like my predecessors, will carry into the future a living vision of the liberal arts that will forever remain grounded in the common good and service to one another. Because really, that is what the world needs today. And we do it really, really well. But we can't have an honest dialogue about the common good without acknowledging the sacrifice and generational harm that was done to those whose land we now inhabit and on which our son is sits. Dating back centuries before William Penn, the region was the spiritual and ancestral home of the Delaware tribe of Indians, the Lenape. In their Algonquin name language, Lenape roughly translates to the people. And for generation, these peacemakers presided over disputes and conflicts of neighboring tribes. They were a grandfather tribe, caretakers of this land and of one another, and I'm humbled to continue their legacy of community as your 19th president. Their environmental stewardship and love for one another is an example for us all. I stand in solidarity with the Delaware tribe, and under my presidency, our sinus will demonstrably embrace the Welcome Home Project and work with you on a path of healing and reconciliation. It is an honor to share today with members of the tribe. <laughs> with open hearts and open minds, our sinus commits to listening, to learning, and to acting in accordance with our commitment to stewardship of your ancestral home and our shared future. I don't take the opportunity to transform the lives of our students, their families, and communities lightly. It is, in fact, the highest privilege. And so in the spirit of the Lenape people, I am dedicating my tenure as president to a simple but powerful idea of one or sinus. As a college that changes lives, we need to manifest a vision that positions this college to change higher education forever. I firmly believe that there is nothing more important we can do than to change higher education, than to create an environment that nourishes the well-being of every student faculty, and staff member. Anxiety, stress, and uncertainty about the future was heightened during the pandemic. Nearly 75% of American college students report feeling anxious, suffering emotional and mental distress. That's untenable, and it is heartbreaking. And there's no simple fix. Change is now routine, and building the resilience is central to the long-term survival, let alone success. Here at Ursinus, we realized that addressing these issues required us to think outside of the box, to reimagine the role of health and well-being in the college and the life of students, faculty, and staff. Last year, founding the new Division of Health and Wellness, Ursinus became one of the first colleges in the country to position health and well-being within the core of the academic and residential enterprise. Yet we have so much more to do as one Ursinus where the responsibility to support every student is accepted by every one of us. And that's why I'm so, so proud to announce that right now, today, Ursinus College is becoming the very first liberal arts college in the nation to, oh goodness, my nose, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> to officially sign the International Okanagan Charter, a campus-wide commitment that re-envisions student well-being embedding health into every aspect of campus culture across the entire student experience. In a few minutes, with literally a stroke of a pen, we will immediately change the way that colleges across the nation, and in fact the world, approach health and well-being on their campuses. And by being the first liberal arts signatory, Ursinus takes an explicit stance in favor of health, equity, social justice, and sustainability in recognition of the fact that the well-being of people 
places, and planet are interdependent. I can think of no way to celebrate an inauguration better than to fully commit ourselves as one Ursinus to this incredible endeavor and lead by example. As I hope today's celebration illustrates, I believe that a liberal education is a vehicle for positive action and transformational change. The liberal arts and sciences give us a lens through which we can view the world and take necessary risks to manifest needed change. And we're not afraid to ask the tough questions of ourselves or of one another. Our Sinus is a college that is and should be proud of its mission, embracing diversity of lived experiences, empowering the thinkers and doers of tomorrow to lead meaningful and positive change in service to planet and people. This is what we do. And we've been doing it since the start. When our sinus was chartered back in 1869, the United States had just begun to piece together a tattered fabric, torn by disunity and bigotry. The first transcontinental railroad was almost complete, and women would soon be granted the right to vote in, West, in Wyoming territory. In a peculiar twist of irony that we can only fully appreciate today, Thomas Edison earned his first patent for the electronic voting machine designed to make congressional voting on Capitol Hill more efficient and time-saving. And of course, Congress had reservations and it was never used. <laughs> then as now, our very imperfect union was at an inflection point. And I share this for two reasons. First, this college was born during a time not only of turmoil, but in tension, but of uncertainty and division. And second, that the idea of progress and resiliency however incremental, would come to serve as the prologue for the Ursinus story, as much as it does today. We're preparing to write a new chapter for Ursinus when, across the country, prospective families question the value and purpose and mission of colleges and universities, and a time when so many students face obstacles that are too often sounding quiet alarms that are too easily dismissed. We know, for instance, that college-bound students of all economic and racial backgrounds are choosing to explore options other than college, especially students of color. Yet too many colleges and universities are still taking pride in their high selectivity rates. It's exclusionary, and we should call it out. Prestige should never, ever equate to a college's ability to decline admission to thousands of students. Why shouldn't we instead provide greater access and opportunity to those students who don't think a college education is in reach. That is, after all, the mission of higher education. We once thought of our work as the great equalizer, but how can we be a great equalizer for those who, choose to, who could benefit the most, choose different paths? Or not as a last resort, but choosing it because they do not believe that the opportunity is for them. Let me share a story. I want to share a story with you that brings that to life. As you know, our sinus is first and foremost about students and their ability to lean into their potential. Ultimately, my career successes are attributable to my students, the ones that I've been honored to mentor, the ones who've traveled with me on some untraditional journeys and have overcome adversity themselves. In my first year as a newly mentored assistant professor, I had a cadre of undergraduate students working with me, about 10 or so. And I had a handful of PhD students, and we were running a very large NSF project that put a lot of pressure on me and those students. One day I noticed that one of the students, we had nicknames for each other, and so this student's nickname was Squishy. He was a student that was non-traditional. He had restarted his undergraduate career in his late 20s. And he was always in the lab working when I arrived in the mornings at 6.30, 7.30. Didn't matter when I got there. And I thought, gosh, what a go-getter. I would shame the other students and the other graduate students, say, man, why can't you be like Squishy? Squishy's here all the time. You know, after a couple of months, one evening, I, was, I realized that I had left one of my mass spectrometers running and had forgotten to shut it down. So I went back to the lab around 11.30 at night or midnight, and there was Squishy, but he wasn't working. He was sleeping on his sleeping bag on the floor. I woke him up and I said, hey, dude, did you stay late to finish some lab work? And he rubbed the sleep out of his eyes. He said, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what it was. I thought, oh, that's weird. So I checked with the other students. Lo and behold, Squishy was homeless. 
I asked the students, well, how is he eating? How is he showering? And they said, well, we've been feeding him, and he uses the athletic facilities to take a shower. And they didn't really know much more about him than that. I asked the dean of students and the department chair and my other colleagues if they knew anything about him. And they said, no, he's pretty quiet. He stays to himself. They were surprised to hear that he was working in my lab because he usually came to campus only for class and then left. So I finally got the courage to ask him what was going on and how I could help because this was no way to live and it certainly wasn't going to allow him to be successful. So it turns out he had been in jail, arrested while he was in college the first time at 21 for drugs. And he had just gotten out the past summer before joining my lab and returning to college. He had no job. Sorry, so he knew that he needed on-campus employment and he saw the ad for, my un for undergrad assistance and he figured that the pay was good, the hours are flexible. He couldn't live at home because his folks lived too far away and he couldn't commute to school. And so he realized that he could work in our lab and sleep in the lab and maybe nobody would notice. The only reason the other students were feeding him was because that they had figured out that he was eating their leftovers at night. After quickly running through this story, he started to cry and slowly began to pick up his books and his papers. And I asked him what the heck he thought he was doing. He said, well, I was dishonest, so you're gonna fire me. I said, are you nuts? Like, you are amazing in the laboratory. You're an absolute joy to have on the team. You're not going anywhere. And so he and I hooked up our arms and we marched across, class, uh, across campus. I brought him to residence life, into financial aid, to see if there was a way we could find him a place to live, get him a meal plan, make sure that he could stay not only for that semester, but to finish his degree. With the help of colleagues and an institution that was committed to the success of non-traditional students like him, we discovered he was eligible for several scholarships and grants, and we leveraged donor support to get him the meal plan and a dorm room. After three years, Squishy had published his research in peer-reviewed journals, had finished his bachelor's in chemistry with a minor in biology, and was accepted to medical school. He's now a practicing physician with a spouse and a couple of kids, and he hasn't forgotten the journey that he took he established a scholarship for formerly incarcerated men to pursue chemistry degrees at the university. And he volunteers as a math and reading tutor at the prison that he's on staff on on the weekends. While he knows that he's giving back to be able to pay it forward, I hope he also knows how much he changed my career. This example showed me one profound importance, and that is well-being and health and student success matter. And that's a legacy he should be very proud of. Golly. Huh. All right. <laughs> so I share a lot in common with Squishy and a lot of my other students and that my journey through college and, and after was unconventional. My high school grades were not stellar. My brother sacrificed everything so that I could go to college. My family didn't have much and they didn't really know how to navigate the college search and with mixed heritage, equally celebrating my roots as a descendant of the Narragansett and Irish. It wasn't until college that I learned that my learning disability, dyslexia, was actually a superpower that allowed me to solve problems in unique ways. If anything, I was definitely not an average student, and I was well, I'm well aware that I was granted opportunities that so many of my peers were not. So please understand this comes from my heart. We need to change higher education and we're gonna change lives. I want us all to accept that challenge. As I've gotten to know you over the past few months, I know that you share this goal, and you, that this chapter, next chapter, the one that we're gonna to build together, matters to you as well. We need to diversify our revenues, certainly, because we need to be able to be adaptive to market demands and make sure that we have the funding necessary. Goodness, for students like Squishy, we also need to raise our visibility, forge new partnerships, build new relationships, support our Lenape family, and support all of those who want to join the Arsinus community. Uh, many of you spoke eloquently about the value of scholarships and the importance of financial supports for our students. We need to create greater access and opportunity, and the only way to do that is through the generosity of the support of donors and philanthropists who provide that scholarship funding. 
We also need to make sure that we better support our students no matter where they are, geographically, economically, or academically, so that they can navigate a too complicated and too messy educational landscape. We can't empower our campus community in new ways unless we actually are able to reach them and provide a tangible benefit to them through the art, your sinus education. This is a moment in time when all of the disruptions that we've gone through are tailor-made for our sinus. And we have to be bold about how, we're, how transformational we are going to be. And lastly, we are going to continue to make the right kind of investments in our infrastructure. The past few years of the IDC and the Shell Hayes Commons enhanced our academic and our social neighborhoods. But how can we look at our current assets and our geographic and carbon footprint oh, goodness, uh, and enable decisions that will benefit students, faculty, and staff in new and perhaps unconsidered ways. There are several ways in which every student's success, the college strategic plan, is going to help us move forward. I don't know what's going on with my nose. It's like it's freezing out. All right. Ugh. I want to paraphrase Mae Jemison, who is the first black woman astronaut to travel into space. Bears never limit themselves because of other people's limited imaginations, and they never limit the imagination of others. We are about to do great, and some would say brave things, and your sincerity and commitment are a foundation upon which we will build. And as your president, I will work alongside you to harness all that is possible. So let's there be absolutely no doubt that our sinus remains unwavering in its core mission. You might recall during my remarks a convocation that I implored our first year students to quote, pave the way for your own aha moments and lean into them and learn from them. Read Darwin and Descartes, Plato, Coates, and Bechtel, and have a conversation with them. Be an active participant in what you're reading by questioning and coming to your own conclusions. I just suggest that each of us in this room today do the same. Let's embrace who we are. Let's be bold and proud and loud in telling our story, a story that includes our commitment to people, places, and planet. And as noted in the Okanagan Charter, of which I'm going to sign now, Thank you very much. Go Bears, go Phils, go Eagles, go Pack. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right, stop. I'm going to keep crying. Stop. Well, as you can tell, <clears throat> these moments are a moment of reflection. And, um, you know, we all sort of reflect back on, on our history, our journeys, those that came along with us, those that inspired us, squishy, others. It's also reflection on where we're at, this fleeting moment in time with our friends and family, and a reflection on where we're going. And Robin, it's, it's really an honor to work with you she just started July 1st, <clears throat> and I can't tell you, I've never seen an executive at the highest levels excel like Robin is doing here at her sinus. It's really an honor to, to be with you here, Robin. Uh, at this time, <clears throat> I invite Reverend Betty Wright Riggins, the college's interim chaplain, to deliver the benediction. All who are able, would you stand, please, for the benediction? Holy One, creator of us all, we pause to say thank you for the gift of this new administration. We thank you for the steady hands that will guide Ursinus into the future. We thank you for those that will listen to those who are sensitive and quieter voices in our community. Thank you for vision, integrity, commitment, and justice 
for all who will surround President Harrigan. We're grateful for this time of renewal and rededication. We are deeply grateful for the presence of faithful partners and administrators, faculty, staff, students, all united as we journey into the future to become one Ursinus. Continue to be gracious unto us, Holy One, and we will listen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Reverend Wright Riggins. Before we continue, I'd like to mention a slight program change. The Lenape people of the Delaware Nation and Moravie Town are unable to join us today. So as we near the close of the installation ceremony, I invite you to enjoy a special drum performance by Blazing Bear Native Drum Group, note bear, <laughs> from Oklahoma. In the spirit of the native traditions and our welcome home partnership with that President Hannigan mentioned, after the performance, you are all cordially invited to attend the reception for President Hannigan and her family here in the field house. My sincere thanks to all who joined us today to celebrate the beginning of a new chapter of history of our Sinus College. Hey! 
Thank you. 